welcome to Town Meeting Television. I'm here with Representative Houghton and Representative Dolan. And if you could just introduce yourself, tell us the district you represent, um, that would be great. Sure. Uh, so I'm Lori Houghton, and I'm in my third term here. I serve on the House Health Care Committee and is serving in Chittenden 8-2, which is the totality of the Village of Essex Junction. And I am Karen Dolan. Uh, representative for my first term and um, also one of the reps for Essex Junction. And we're here, I, you know, I invited you in to just give us a little rundown about um, the merger separation question, which has now finally come to a head with the legislature passing approval of the charter change amendment to make Essex Junction the city of Essex Junction. And so this is a big moment, and, and Rep. Yeah. Houghton, maybe you could give us a little rundown about the history of that conversation's been going on for a long time. Sure, uh, it has been. It's a super exciting moment um, for the village of Essex Junction. So, you know, this conversation has been going on for decades. I think the first vote, if I remember correctly, was 1956. Um, and we've had 16 votes since then for some variation of merger or separation. And we keep saying, you know, this is the right time with the right people um, in the right place for both communities to really put it all out, which we did with the question of merger and voted on it twice, put it all out there and it didn't happen. And so the village said, you know what, it's time that we be separate communities so we can both thrive independently of each other while still maintaining a good relationship just like we do with Williston and Winooski and Burlington and other communities around us. And so it, the bill, uh, the, the plan to merge passed, or to separate, I'm sorry, passed with 88% of voters um, voting for it. And we had close to 50% of the voting population in the village uh, vote. So it was really exciting. Um, and, you know, I think, I think where we've gotten um, stuck over the years a lot of the time is one, it's a lot of hard work and both communities have other municipal related issues that have to be taken care of. And it's, it was on the, I was a trustee um, for quite a while and it, it's hard as volunteers to really find the time to do it all. And so I feel like all the efforts in the past have been really um, good progress forward to what happened today or this time and we're excited um, we're we're planning a celebration on July 1st when this becomes official for the whole community and I know still staying in touch with the trustees as Karen does as well and and the community members as as we do that this is this is now the time that we can focus on the village and I still call it a village. And honestly, I might still call it a village. I've lived there 20 years now and my family's lived there. there and my husband was born and raised there. Um, my father-in-law has lived there for 80 plus years. And so I think I'm probably unfortunately gonna still call it the village, but we can finally focus on what we want. So what, what are the economic development drives we wanna do? Um, what do we wanna do to enhance the aesthetics of our community? How do we wanna make sure that we continue our walkability and our bikeability and really thrive what, thrive and build what the community wants um, using, and this is the key piece that really has been the sticking point over the years, using our money for our initiatives. So having to pay for services in the town of Essex that we weren't receiving um, or paying more than the residents of the town of Essex for services we were receiving was quite frankly, just not fair. And so now we can use our dollars to for our community on what we want. Um, so I'm just, I don't know if you can tell, I'm super excited and I think everyone is. I know there's some people who voted no and I hope we can bring them along to see the value of what we're gonna build um, in the village. And so I think it's great. So there are a couple of key points there. You mentioned July 1st is when this becomes official. You mentioned the celebration and you mentioned the name. And Karen, I'm hoping that you can give us a little background on just maybe the procedural stuff for folks who don't understand why does a community have a charter and why is the legislature involved? And you know, if you look at 
Um, this was Bill H-491. So if you go to the legislative page and you want to see, there's a whole series of procedural things that had to happen to make this come about. So tell us about the procedural stuff, the date and the date. Yes, happy to, because um, as you mentioned, lots of steps along the way. And I feel like that's something um, Representative Houghton and I tried to explain along the way is that there are many hurdles and we had to keep moving through. And so it was a um, huge civics lesson for our entire community. And I'll say for myself as a brand new legislator, um, it, it was an opportunity to see how uh, ideas from the community come into a charter change in this case and then move into legislation and then now sit at the governor's desk, hopefully for his signature. And um, how, why it had to be, these are some of the first questions I asked. I was like, yeah, why do we have to have it go to the legislature? I'm happy to shepherd it. And it turns out different states operate differently. Vermont is a Dillon's rule state, which um, how it works is all charter changes, all um, uh, charter changes that are done at a municipal level need to go through the legislature and to make sure they're constitutional and that you know there's consistency in looking at that. Some states don't do it that way. We do do it that way. And so that's why it needed to go through. Um, and we have a gov ops committee, both in the House and the Senate, that that's their primary charge um, a lot of is looking at charter changes and reviewing that. So um, when the charter change passed in the town or in, sorry, in the village, um, that was the first step of, you know, folks were like, yay, it passed. It's like, okay, but now it, need, it, has to, it needs to go to the legislature. And um, kind of the process that it's had is passed out of the village and then it started in the house and well, actually before that even, um, Representative Houghton and I had to take the charter change and turn it into a bill language. And that's how it became H-491. So turned it into a bill and then um, it goes into the house. It got assigned to House GovOps and um, they passed it unanimously, went to the house floor. I think they had another stop along the way, um, but it um, passed the house um, I think basically unanimously, and then it starts all over in the Senate again. So there's multiple stops along the way where it needs to be vetted and hear from all the different parties, hear from all the different sides. And um, it was impressive to see how, you know, um, you know, people weighed in on it. But one of the most impressive things I think was we heard again and again how solid our charter was with this. And I I think that speaks to what Representative Houghton said earlier. It was like so many people were involved in this. Like this was the time to do it. Things aligned um, and ready to put in the work and had the energy, the focus. And um, I think that's one of the reasons it passed unanimously all through all those hurdles. So um, just the other week, it finally passed out of the Senate. And um, I think both Representative Houghton and I learned when we went to check, okay, so is it ready to go to the governor? I learned, oh, yes, it's passed through all the pieces, but it actually needs to get signatures of all these different people before it can leave the state house to go to the governor. So, you know, it's great. There's lots of checks and balances and making sure we're getting there. But I think now we're really eager to have the governor sign it. And um, once that happens, it will be official. And the effective date is, is July 1st. So that's when it will actually come come to be. Yeah, it's a real, I mean, it sounds like a real lesson in sort of the nitty gritty of democracy where both the politics and feelings and ideas come together with the rules and procedures and foundation that we rest on and hopefully has um, some, you know, I guess that's where you get into the structural issues of our democracy that makes it really interesting. Maybe somebody could just, and Lori, uh, if you have, I think you have to unmute your phone again. Um, if you could, somebody could just talk about the name and how that is it going, you know, is it going to be the city and the, the village of city of Essex Junction, I think is what we're calling it now, right? The city of Essex Junction. Talk about the name a little bit. Sure. Um, so it is the city of Essex Junction. And that honestly is a statutorial requirement, not a um, anything we requested. So a village is always part of a town 
And so because we're separating, we can no longer be the village. So it will be the city of Essex Junction. Um, if I could, do you mind if I go back to one comment from before? So you talk about a real civics lesson and the policy and the mechanics and it is, and that, but I also wanna stress the relationships through the process have been really, really important. So it, you know, it started with the relationships in the community, the residents who work together in both the town and the village to try to merge. Through, the, through many, many years, it's been the relationships with the select board and the trustees um, who have worked together continuously, whether it was through merger you know, discussions, separation discussions, collaboration discussions. Um, and then I will say, it's also a relationship that Karen and I have built here in the state house. Um, it, you know, it's, it, it takes talking to people, having civil discourse, and shepherding something through that you really want. And you can have the great policy and you have, it can have a great process and the great mechanics. But I also think it's really important to have a relationship. And I think sometimes that's lost in what we talk about with, you know, um, civics these days. And so I just wanted to point that out. Sorry, I got a little off track there. <laughs> no, I, I think you bring up really good points. And it didn't, it didn't occur to me that there could be politics at the legislative level about this decision, but I suppose there probably are when you talk about communities changing or separating or any any kind of change like this is, can be difficult, obviously. Um, did you, care, uh, Rep Dylan, did you wanna say anything more about the naming? I mean, does this, does, I mean, the name will change also the, the legislative body. Is, are you going to now have a mayor of the city of Essex Junction? No. No, nope. oh. and I think. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so that is something that is in the charter and um, Representative Houghton, I think you know the details a bit more. I think it's like a couple years in that there is set to be a conversation to look at the um, leadership for the city. But for right now, it will stay with a city, city manager, you know, currently a village manager um, and the trustees in the same model. And I think what part of it was is realizing there's not enough time to really fully vet this and kind of come to a decision. And it was like, why are we gonna rush this? The current model is, is working right now. Um, and so we kept it as is, but there is a clause or a piece that says within so many years, um, we as a city now will have this conversation and determine what is the best path forward. Great, that's good to know. Um, is there anything more? I mean, I think this is great. We're going to add to this. We're going to excerpt the parts of the legislature and put that together so folks can just see that process happen right. through the legislature. Right. At least the at least the um, the visual parts. It's the it's one of those silver linings of the pandemic yes. that we get to see all these recordings of the legislative process. Um, yeah. And so we'll share that with folks at the end of this video. Is there anything more that you want to share? On this, um, yeah, I will just add um, the bill was uh, passed to the governor yesterday, and so he has five days, not including the day of signature. I mean, the day of delivery and Sundays to pass to sign it, um, and just as part of a civics lesson. So it could be he could sign it, he could choose not to sign it and go into law without a signature, or he could choose to veto it. Um, we haven't heard any indications that he would do anything other than sign it. So we're anxiously awaiting that day to happen. And I appreciate um, Town Meeting TV doing this as a segment because I think it is really important not only to record the history that's being made, but it is a civics lesson um, that is, is really important for people to understand. So it's been great. Thank you. Great. And will you all attend the signing if there is one? We're working on that to see yeah. if we can get a signing ceremony. Absolutely. And if not, we just want it to sign, be signed in. So we, we will take yeah. it either way. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, um, Rep Houghton. You're there back in the cafeteria, it seems. So things are opening up the state house and you're Rep Dolan in a committee room. Is that right? Yes. An empty back committee this, room right now. Yeah. 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 But the state house is open. Somebody was asking me the other day, can I go visit? And I said, yeah, I think you can go and visit. Um, yes. Absolutely. And, um, so thank you both for your service and for participating today and uh, letting folks know and um, uh, continue watching Town Meeting TV for more information about your community. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
Please listen to the first reading of the bills by number only. H-491. To government operations. And we are going to take a look at the, the last charter that we want to take a peek at today. Um, rest assured, there will be others for us to work on. Um, but this one is, uh, is one that brings a few of our colleagues from uh, the village of Essex Junction here to uh, help us understand the charter change relating to Essex separation. So welcome to you folks, and you're welcome to come and join us at the table. Thank you. All right, welcome back to the House Government Operations Committee. Uh, we are meeting this afternoon to hear from a couple more witnesses on H-491 an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and adoption of the city charter. Um, we have with us today, uh, Mr. Brown from the village trustees, and Mr. Murray, who is vice chair of the select board. I understand that the chair of the select board um, had a family emergency and wasn't able to join us. Um, and so we wish him well. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Murray, for, for coming to speak with us in his place. Um, I think since this is the, uh, the village uh, separation charter proposal, I'm gonna go first to Andrew Brown, who I gather is the president of the village trustees. So welcome, Mr. Brown, and please share with us your perspective on why the village of Essex Junction would like to become the city of Essex Junction. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, Representative Colton Hansis, Vice Chair, uh, Representative Gannon, Ranking Member, Representative LeClaire and the Full House Committee on Government Operations. Truly appreciate the opportunity to, to be here and to really help advocate on behalf of the 88% of Village of Essex Junction residents who voted to separate from the town of Essex. And really what I'd like to do is I'd like to start off uh, in the similar way that the trustees started off all of our work sessions, which we conducted from April uh, through September, when we were creating this, this charter to begin with. And we started it off with a review of our goal statement, which states to create an independent Essex Junction, ensuring that it has a foundation that provides for economic and political stability, reflects the village character, has opportunity for growth, and looks towards the future. Further, the village trustees agreed to the statement on how we would get there, which states, this will be a village-led process that is future-oriented. We will steer clear of distractions and act with civility, transparency, and deliberateness. The trustees will work to develop consensus and speak with a consistent voice. We will engage with, bring together, seek input from, and work to inform our community. We will work with the select board and maintain a healthy relationship with our neighbors in the town. To that last point, one of the things I want to make sure to highlight is that on May 24th of 2021, the village trustees and the town select board agreed to and signed an amicable separation resolution, which in part states, the select board and trustees will meet in good faith to cooperatively develop mutually beneficial agreements as necessary to, reach, to achieve an amicable separation, along with the possible provision of sharing services. Uh, it is Friday afternoon, and I promise not to keep you all too, too much longer, but there was a request for a little bit more testimony to understand the plans that are in process between the town of Essex and the proposed new city of Essex Junction as the separation charter is in front of us in the form of H-491. So we have with us this afternoon uh, Susan McNamara-Hill, who's town clerk from Essex, um, Susan, I don't know if you have prepared remarks or if you are making yourself more available for Q&A. Um, I think the committee's testimony so far has been around, um, you know, focused in on the charter for the future city of Essex Junction. But if there are any considerations that the town clerk can share with us, we would love to hear from you. Forward with investigating the separation, but we, we chose not to do the vote very intentionally. And, and Tucker, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the voters could petition for a non-binding vote. Could they have not? Yes. And yes, they, yes they could have. Yep, thank you. Any remaining questions from committee members?
All right, I would entertain a motion. Paul, so moved. Were you making a motion that the committee adopt draft 2.1 of H491? I think that's what he was saying. I you? am, sorry. I believe that's what he said. He's a man of few words. I can't figure out who, who went first. <laughs> I was there myself, but yes. Okay, <clears throat> any remaining questions about draft 2.1 of H491? Representative LeClaire. This will do a drive-by through Ways and Means. It will be a full stop in Ways and Means. Okay. Complete with, I'm sure, witnesses, and hopefully they get the full experience. <laughs> Thank you. It's all yours, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Are you ready for that one? Yes. Uh, thank you to the members from Barry City and Barry Town for being willing to uh, shepherd this bill to the floor. It means you'll get the opportunity to uh, sit down with the Ways and Means Committee. All right, any remaining questions before we go ahead and take the vote? All right, Mr. Clerk, take it away. I shall call the roll. Gannon. Yes. Mariki. Yes. LeClaire. Yes. Hooper. Yes. Colston. Yes. Anthony. Yes. Mihoski. Yes. Lefebvre. Yes. Bigley. Yes. McCarthy. Yes. Copeland Hanses. Yes. The bill passes 11 0 0. All right. Uh, thank you, Chair Watts, for being with us today. Um, and thank you, Tucker, for your uh, good work on this bill. And I trust that uh, Representatives LeClaire and Anthony will come to see you, Tucker, if they have any questions in preparing their floor reports. We have a bill on the notice calendar for referral to a money committee pursuant to House Rule 35A. House Bill 491 is an act relating to the creation of the City of Essex Junction and adoption of the City Charter, materially affecting the revenue of one or more municipalities. The bill is committed, uh, referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. We are going to start our work on H491, which is an act relating to the creation of the City of Essex Junction and the adoption of the City Charter. Um, and uh, we are going to start with Representative Hope. Come and join Thank us. You. It's so strange. To uh, and before we go too far, I want to say hello to uh, Andy Watts and Andrew Brown, both of whom are with us and have testified in other committees. This is not your first committee testifying on Zoom. I assume you must have talked to the government operations committees as well. Yep. Yes, that's correct. We have a number of items that we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with H491, which is the Essex Charter. I don't know if that's the official name for it, City Charter for Essex. Um, and we've got uh, Karen Dolan uh, with us. Um, and Arthur Anderson is with us with a redraft on one section. I don't know. That's the only issue that I was aware of that the committee was going to address if other people have issues trying to identify them this morning, but I think it's just this one. Good morning and welcome to the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. We are meeting this morning to consider a uh, very small amendment to the City of Essex Junction Charter that the Ways and Means Committee has put forward that we will consider on the floor momentarily. So Representative Matos, if you could explain to us what your committee amendment does. Yep. For the record, I'm Representative Chris Matos. And our amendment relates to the assessment and taxation agreement, uh, subsection 1003. And it's really just adding in language um, about the education property tax. As you know, the education fund is near and dear to House Ways and Means. So we just added a sentence at the end to say uh, the section shall not be construed to supersede 
any provision of state law relating to the education property tax. Now we'll turn to House Bill 491, which is an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. The bill was referred to the Committee on Government Operations, which recommends that the bill be amended as printed in today's House calendar. The member from Barry City, Representative Anthony, will report for the committee materially affecting the revenue of one or more municipalities. The bill was then referred to the Committee on Ways and Means, which also recommends that the bill be amended as printed in today's calendar. The member from Milton, Representative Matos, will report for the committee. Please listen to the second reading of the bill. H-491, an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. Member from Barry City. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The town of Essex includes the village of Essex Junction and has since the chartering of the village. The village and the town have struggled to create a system of equitable shared governance. This goes back a long time, measured in generations. In fact, your Committee on Government Operations, a score of years ago, tried to mediate the disagreements between the village and the town. Uh, that effort came to naught, unfortunately, and moving uh, forward in time to the present, uh, a series of merger talks took place and a shared governance model was constructed uh, by representatives from both the town and the village, often referred to as the three plus three proposal. That proposal was put to a vote just this past March, 2021. It passed in the village, uh, but alas, failed in the town. There was then a repeat vote in April. Again, consensus could not be found. As of this past summer, or the summer of 21, um, merger negotiations converted into if you will, separation negotiations. And in November, it was put to the vote to ask the village whether they wanted to separate and create their own municipality called the city of Essex Junction. That vote passed um, by a wide margin over 50% of the registered voters participated. And into the uh, remainder of the year was a um, attempt by both the administrators of the town and the village to hammer out a way to transition to a separate city of Essex Junction. Up next is House Bill 491, which is an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. Please listen to the third reading of the bill. H-491, an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. The question is, shall the bill pass? Are you ready for the question? If so, please unmute yourselves for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those <coughs> opposed, please say nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you have passed the bill. H-491, an act relating to the creation of Essex Junction, of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of uh, the city charter, which was introduced on January 7th and uh, read for the first time, referred to the Committee on Government Operations, excuse me, um, shall be read for the first time. H-4. 
an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. You've heard the first reading of H-491 and the bill is referred to the Committee on Government Operations. All right, so if you would like to text, kind of give us the context for sure. this and what's happening and- Yes, so I um, thank you, Lori Houghton from uh, Essex Junction. So I have a prepared statement because uh, the relationship with Essex Town and Essex Junction is very confusing and has been ongoing, but please stop me at any time uh, if you have any questions. You could just help me clarify at the beginning. When you say Essex Junction, is that the town? Nope. So the village of Essex Junction is encompassed by the town. We are like a donut hole where someone took a bite where the river is. And so village of Essex Junction, or what, sorry, I say Essex Junction, is part of the town of Essex. And then I'll explain more. Yes, so you have in front of you uh, H-491. We'll start on page 14 with subchapter six to pick up where we left off last time. And uh, as a brief reminder, based on Senator Clarkson's most recent comment, although this is a charter for a brand new city, the majority of the bill that you have in front of you is taken directly from the existing village of Essex Junction charter. Oh, okay, great. There's quite a bit in here that uh, is currently codified Title 24 Act for the village. We now have for action H-491, an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. It was reported favorably by the Committee on Government Operations. Uh, please listen to the second reading of the bill. H-491, an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. For the Committee on Government Operations, the Senator from Chittenden is recognized. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it is not every day that we vote to create a new city in the Senate. Um, and it is a, a historic vote in a 110 year journey for the relationship between Essex Junction and Essex Town. And we do have uh, members of both uh, the municipal government of the community, as well as members from uh, the other chamber from the house here to witness. And I want to recognize that and I also I uh, want to note that I will borrow heavily from their perspective and their words. Uh, we gave this due consideration in your Senate Government Operations Committee, but also relied deeply on the expertise and longer testimony uh, in the House. And the bill before you was not amended by your Committee on Government Operations. H-491 is a charter change to establish the city of Essex Junction. It is important for us to review how we've come to this place and why 88% of those who voted want an independent community. Since 1892, the village of Essex Junction has operated as a municipal unit of government within the town of Essex, both chartered municipalities. The communities have been voting on some form of merger or separation since 1958. There are some key details in the last 20 years that are worth discussing as to how we are now at this point in the year 2022. In 2000, a five month long government operations mandated mediation process ended with no agreed upon resolution. In 2006, a year long community led task force created a charter for a new merged municipality. It passed narrowly with town uh, with town, the town outside the village voting no and the village voting yes. A revote overturned the results. Over the next 10 years, the boards worked collaboratively to find shared services. In 2018, they created a subcommittee to again craft a plan for the future of the two communities. This plan of merger vote, uh, which we can discuss in more detail, uh, then failed. And th that leads us to where we are today with a charter change request that creates a path forward for two separate communities while fully recognizing the past history of these efforts. We now have for action H-491, an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. Are there any amendments to be offered before <coughs> the reading? 
Please listen to the third reading of the bill. H-491, an act relating to the creation of the city of Essex Junction and the adoption of the city charter. You have heard the third reading of the bill. The question is, shall the bill pass in concurrence? The Senator from Chittenden is recognized. The, thank you, Madam President. On second reading, the Senator from Franklin asked if there was any pending litigation or concern about litigation for this particular charter change. Uh, having talked to officials in Essex Junction, there is no pending litigation that anyone is aware of. Of course, we live in a litigious society and there could always be litigation, um, but you know, it is the prerogative of a municipality to make a decision such as this and to bring it to the legislature. And given that there was an amicable uh, MOU related to separation, I I'm no lawyer, but um, it, it does not seem like there would be favorable litigation around a amicable separation agreement that's already been established that we are now voting on and sending to the governor. So the question is, shall the bill pass in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying no. The ayes have it and you have passed H-491 in concurrence.